Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be looking at the best shortcuts in Excel that you didn't know about. So we're gonna go through this video, we're gonna run through each one of them individually with a quick example to show how it works, uh, and hopefully you will learn something that you weren't already aware of. In total, I think it's just short of 20 shortcuts, so I'll try and get through them as quickly but efficiently as possible uh, so this video doesn't go on forever. So the first one we have is sum all above, or basically sum all of your values uh, in a table. And the best example is, as you'll see here, we've got auto sum totals. So in a scenario where you might want to have a total of this first column here, of this column separate, and likewise for the rows, and ending up with a total in the end here for all these numbers altogether. We can achieve this really simply by just selecting all of this information and those blank columns at the end there. And all we need to do is now hold down the Alt key and then the equal sign, and you can see it's automatically populated for us. So for each of those totals, let's put the sum in there uh, to give us the total for each of those individual ranges. The next one we have to look at is current date. So this is a great shortcut if you just want to get the, the current date, so today's date. All you need to do is hold down the control key and then hit the semicolon key and you can see that a date is automatically populated into that box. So today's date is the 15th of April. Following on from that, but obviously slightly different, is if you didn't want the date but you wanted the time, we have also a shortcut for that as well. All we need to do this time is do control, shift and then the semicolon and you can see you can get the exact time uh, as at the point of entering it in there. So the exact point now is the 17 minutes past four. So real two quick beneficial ones to have right there. The next one we have when we're working with a workbook is we might want to like select the whole row. So obviously we can quickly do that by selecting the row as so. Or if we know that this is the row we want to select, row 19, as long as we've selected in that row, all we need to do is hit the shift key followed by the space key and you can see it's automatically selected that row for us. But following on from that, the next one we might want to do is select the whole column. This we can also really do by quickly going into, again, the desired cell what is within that column, and just do the control this time and space, and you can see how that's now selected the whole column for us. Uh, another little shortcut, I hadn't put this on the list, but it's just what I want to do. If you wanted to select the whole workbook, all you need to do is do control A, and you can see that that selects the whole workbook for you as well. So a little bonus addition there for you as well. Other than selecting and hiding rows, we might also wish to uh, hide rows or hide columns. This can be done again easily. So we select the desired row, and all we need to do is do control and the number nine, and you can see that that row is hidden. And I did that a bit quick there. So if I undo, so control Z, row 21, I see I'm selected within, all I need to do is hold down the control key and then push the number nine, and you can see that they are done. And it's worth mentioning, because I sort of skipped along a few here, with these commands, when I say hold down shift and then the number nine, you first hold down the control button and then hit those uh, following buttons afterwards, what will obviously do this desired result. And I'm just doing control Z here as well, uh, just revert back to prior to making that change. The other one again is hide columns, so it's not much different to the, the last one of hiding rows. All you need to do is do control and zero, and you can see how that's now hit that row, uh, that column, sorry, for us. Control Z, go back again. Uh, next one might be, okay, we want to delete uh, a selected column or row. So in order to do that, let's say we've selected a row 21 here. Actually, let's go to the one where we've got some text, so the today's date here. So let's say we want to select the rows. So if we go Control 9 to, uh, oh no, to hide it now. If I want to do Shift and Space to select the row, and in order to delete that selected row, all I now need to do is hold down the Control button and do the minus. And you can see that row has now been completely deleted. So you can see we've got 18, 19, 20. So we can clearly see that that's not been hidden. It has indeed been deleted. So if I just do Control Z to go back there again. Alternatively, if I was to hit the column. Oh, it's gone to everything. If I was to hit just the column, so let's go Control and Space, and this time do Control and Minus again, you can see how that has automatically removed our column for us. So again, two real key little shortcuts there. Um, alternatively, as you're probably aware, you can just right click on the column or the uh, row, and you can then do your delete from there. But the shortcut is the important of this, is the uh, thing we're focusing on in this video. Next one, so we might want to do an enter a new line within the cell. 
So this potentially comes in handy when you're typing text. So let's say we want to put in this, um, uh, this is my first row. And if you're working with any other uh, text editor, should we say, well, obviously Excel is not a text editor, but if you were, and you wanted to go onto a new line to say, this is my second line, in Excel, if you hit enter, as you know, it'll go into a new cell. But actually, we want this to be a new line within this same cell. So at the end of the text, all we need to do here is we need to hold down the Alt key this time and then hit the Enter button. And you can see at first it looks like it's just removed our first line, but I will type here, this is my second line. Hit Enter. And you can see at the moment, at the moment we've got a bit of word wrap going on there. But if I was to expand this column, you can see how it's actually put my text into two separate rows. And I can expand this at the top here, just so you can see that again. So if you wanted to do a third row as well, again, hold down the Alt key, hit Enter, and it will now create a third row for you. So this is my third row. And if I could spell third, that might help as well. Let's do third. So you get the idea, and that's how that works when entering new rows within the same cell. Next one we move on to is inserting a new sheet. So as you can see, we've just got the single sheet here, titled Essential Excel. But let's say we want to add a new sheet to this workbook. Very simply, all we need to do is hold down the Shift key and do F11. And you can see a new sheet, titled Sheet 4, has gone in for us. If we wanted to do another one again, again, Shift, F11. And we can keep doing this as many times as we require. So that then helps me follow on to the next one. So when we've got a number of sheets in our workbook, uh, rather than sort of clicking here into each sheet, because you know sometimes you'll be typing away, you don't want to keep going to your mouse, how can you navigate through all these sheets using shortcuts? Simple, all you need to do is hold down the control button, and this is to go and move forward through your sheet. So if you hold down control, and then use the page down button, you can see we can now skip through each one of those sheets. And it doesn't look, didn't look like I was changing there much at all, but obviously going through blank sheets, but hopefully it did when we got to Accenture Excel at the end there. Alternatively, if you want to go backwards through the sheets, again, you hold control, but this time we're going to be using page up. So it's page up to go backwards through the sheets and page down to go forwards. And hopefully you can see that update on the screen there. So that is a really useful one. I find myself using that quite a lot, uh, to be fair, when jumping around different sheets and trying to compare information. Cool, so the next one, or the last, the last sort of section, shall we say, is looking on the formatting of cells. And what I'm just gonna do is just delete these sheets here, just to tidy up the page. So I've grouped them all together. Let's go delete. There we go, nice and tidy once again. And let's just scroll down the page ever so slightly to number formats down here. So the first one to look at is formatting numbers with a comma format. At the moment, you can see our table is all in that general format, so we've just got a bunch of numbers. But the first one I want to do is format it into the comma format. So for the thousand, uh, so that'd be for 1,520. As you can see in this first example, I want there to be a comma after that number one to correctly identify that it's 1,520. What I'm gonna do is just highlight this first column and then to get the actual comma formatting, all I need to do is hold down my control, shift, and then number one button. And you can see we've quite quickly got our commas in there to give us the uh, more accurate represent rep representation of that number if I could get the word representation out. Uh, another one we have, so we'll keep moving through these, is the currency format. So let's go to the currency column. And let's just do control shift and down again, just to highlight this column, if you weren't aware of that shortcut. Again, another bonus for this video, but I'm sure you're probably already aware of that one. So this one we want currency, so it's exactly the same, but this time, this time we're gonna do control shift and then the number four. What will give us our default currency there, you can see it's defaulted to pounds for us here. And then moving along, we can do the percentage one, another one I find myself using quite a lot when we're trying to convert, you can see a decimal number here into a percentage. All we need to do is just do control shift down and this time we do control shift and the number five and you can see that's turned that into a nice percentage number for us. And lastly, in terms of these number formats, I'm just gonna do a simple date format. So if I do highlight that little range, this time slightly different, we're just gonna do control and then the hashtag and you can see that that's formatted it to a date for us there. So that's how you can also use format uh, that's how you can also use 
uh, the shortcuts to format your numbers that you have. And I've just noticed it, but apologies for this banner that keeps popping up, but it's trying to get me to sign into Office 365. And the very last one I have on my sheet here is how to return back to cell A1. So you know often you could be working in this sheet, you might have a lot of data and you might end up far down here somewhere. And all you want to do is go right back up to cell A1 just so you can see how the page looks from that top corner. All you need to do to do that is hold down your control button and then use the home button on your keyboard. So control then home and you can see it's jumped straight to cell A1 for us there. So quite a quick and punchy little video there, but hopefully we covered off a number of shortcuts that you weren't aware of. And also as we've titled it, the most useful Excel shortcut keys, uh, we thought is a really good one to share with you. Because there's often a number of shortcuts that you probably use every day, like Control C and Control uh, v for paste, but these shortcuts are ones that hopefully you'll find uh, of great use and you'll find yourself using them every day now that you've learned them. If it's the first video of ours that you've seen or if you've been uh, a viewer of many other videos, please do subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button, uh, therefore you'll be notified of all our future videos as they come out. Lastly, thank you very much for watching and we shall see you in the next video. Before you go, don't forget to check out the other videos on our channel. You'll see everything from other functions and formulas through to tips and tricks. We've also created some playlists so you can see these categorized together. So make sure you check those out and get all those useful information. And obviously, as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button.